Hi, I'm Tommy Wolf from the Bartizza Lab, and in this particular video, we're going to be looking at some of the techniques favoured by Bartley Gorman, otherwise known as King of the Gypsies. Bartley Gorman was a very prolific, very successful, very powerful uh, bare knuckle boxer. And in his book, King of the Gypsies, he describes some of the techniques that helped him have a competitive edge in his bare knuckle days. And I'm going to take you through a run through of those and see how you think about them. So, first of Bartley Gorman's techniques, he calls it the half fist. Now the half fist to people in, in martial arts might refer to this as say a leopard fist strike. So it's these knuckles here. So as opposed to the knuckles of the normal fist, these knuckles here. Now Bartley Gorman's half fist, he says he aims it to the philtrum. The philtrum is the bit between the nose and the top lip here. Typically when Bartley Gorman's throwing it, he'll throw a shot. So he'll throw a lead shot and then follow through with this here. So one, two, one, two. And he tends to use it in a kind of crashing way. So it doesn't, it doesn't come with the same force as a cross. You know, it can't because it's so easy to miss. So therefore, you know, you're using a little less power to gain a little bit more accuracy. So again, the lead off and then a half fist to the filtrum. So again, he drives this under the nose. The best way to aim it, I find, is to treat it as if you were punching up the nose. Here, yeah. you see? If you punch down too much, you can risk hitting the teeth. So if you punch it up, you'll get under the nose and into the filtrum with this half fist. So Bartley Gorman's half fist typically comes after a lead left, crashes and comes up, crash, up. <coughs> Nasty stuff. Next is the double punch behind the ears. Now, there are two methods for this. The first is when you're at extreme close range. So you're at a range where you've got a compression. You'll do it with two vertical fists here. And you drive it that way. So you end up in a stand up grapple <coughs> from this way. Now for me, I always like to combine this with a headbutt. So Bartley Gorman, he has the punch behind the ears, on, or just on the ear. So just behind, or just on. This is chest to chest. I like this with the nut as well, with the headbutt. <coughs> Double punch behind the ears. He also likes a single punch behind the ear. A single punch behind the ear tends to come in a longer horizontal hook. So close up, the punch behind the ears, two hands, bang. <coughs> and again, you have your stand-up grapple, <coughs> you drive both in, bang, bang. And making sure you're running the knuckle line just behind the ear. So you want the knuckles to just fit there, nice and nasty. With the longer one, that's typically one-handed, and it comes round, and you're curving the hand this way. You're aiming to hit with the big knuckle, around the side. So a bit like you would with a rabbit punch, and in this instance we're pulling it a bit short and we're getting it behind the ear. And again, this comes from a stand-up grapple. Now it might be slightly more to one side or the other, and we jam this shot in here. And again, once we've done that, we're ready to move off and out if we're so inclined. So we get it nice and close. We're here. Got this shot, wow, right behind the ear. So Bartley Gorman's close up. So shot behind the ear, double hand. <coughs> often with a headbutt. <coughs> shot behind the ear, single hand. Often off a diagonal step and crunch it in this way. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay, next one, he calls it the single knuckle strike to the eye, so this, this Ippon Ken, as you'll see in other arts. And again, traditionally, this is delivered for him at closer range, okay? So it's closer range. He's not throwing it with the full force of a punch because the accuracy just isn't there. The range will trick you into cocking it up and hitting it off the forehead or under the eye. It's just not gonna cause effect. So in this middle range, a range where 
hooks and uppercuts are appropriate at this range, then we can drive this in. So you've got percussive shots, which come up, okay? You've also got grinding shots, where we get close, and we twist it in here. So you've got percussive shots, but delivered at no further than hook uppercut range. And then you've got grinding shots, which typically come with a single handed clinch, and we drive it in. As we move into our opponent, we pull his head into us, and we grind this in here. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and nasty. All right. We've got Bartley's rabbit punch to the kidney. Now, the rabbit punch comes down like a sharp chopping hammer fist. And typically, that comes after a hook. So we end up close. I'm going to smash in my right hook here. As I've stepped off to the side, now I can deliver that rabbit blow to the kidney. Again, the rabbit blow can be delivered with the side of the fist in a hammering motion or with the forearm. It doesn't really matter. So as soon as we've thrown that setup hook, oh, we've got close, forearm or fist, doesn't matter. And typically in twos. So forearm or fist, Bartley Gorman's rabbit punches to the kidney. At longer range, Bartley had a wicked right hand under the heart. So obviously, typically with his right hand punching to the left hand side, he would drop and spear this out. The important thing about punching to the heart is that there's no point punching down to the heart, because typically you'll hit the pectoral, which is strong, or you'll miss and hit the top portions of the ribs. It's not gonna cause much damage. So when you're boxing at slightly longer range, Bend your knees, dip your knees, spear that out. <coughs> so you wanna make sure that your shoulder is in line with the heart. Shoulder is in line with the heart. We're not punching down. The shoulder and the heart need to be on the same railway track. <coughs> from here, <coughs> from here, <coughs> from here. So Bartley's punch from the heart was very wicked. Typically, he'd fake one to the top, drop his body weight, get this in. So no down, make sure your entire body is level with that heart, and then smash. As the body weight's coming down, then the punch comes out. Don't drop and then hit. Whoosh, drop and hit at the same time. Whoosh, but the fist should connect soon as the shoulder is in line, or broadly in line, with the heart. So fake the jab, drop, and as you drop, strike, make sure you're sunk down enough to make sure you're missing that pectoral, you're not hitting the rib, you're hitting just under the heart. Okay. He's got a very wicked right or left to the kidneys. So you've seen the kidney rabbit blow, which is the chop or the hammer. His other blow to the kidney was as he's turning so we'll do a long downward hook. So we'll do a circular evasion, so a side step. As he does so, this hand is towards the face, one, and smash that straight into the kidney. So end up moving, circle out the way, one, and you drop this in. So it's a long hook to the kidney, aiming with the big knuckles here, right round the back. You can reach it from up close, but depending on the length of your arms, this can be more or less effective. If you're really this close, the rabbit punches or the rabbit chops to the kidneys, they do the business. At further range, circling out and striking is much more efficient. So let's say I slip this hand as I turn in, fire into the kidney. Slip, turn, slip, turn, slip, turn. So he's long looping shots to the kidneys to differentiate from the rabbits and the chops. Next one we got, quite peculiar to Bartley Gorman, is he recommends punches under the armpit. So again, if we're in a close range kind of 
boxing grapple, instead of throwing a traditional uppercut under the armpit, obviously the bob's got a slightly warm sense of armpit, but you get the idea. The fist just comes straight up like this. So as opposed to an uppercut, the fist comes up like so. We're still aiming to hit with the big knuckles, but we're firing it straight up. So where we'd normally burst in for an underhook, here we're smashing straight up under the armpit. Using the same mechanics, so you're still bursting your hips, you're still launching it as if it were an uppercut, but it's driving just into the rather sensitive armpit. <coughs> Often, this can be coupled up by a following hook. So we've got into a close grapple, I've hit with this kind of unorthodox uppercut to the armpit, <coughs> and then I can step off with a hook to the head <coughs> from here. Up close, bang, into the armpit, <coughs> step off, hook. <coughs> nice and simple, but it's a nice, nasty shot, and one you don't hear about or see that often. Then you've got punch to the Adam's apple. Nice and simple. So, Punch to the Adam's apple. It's hard to punch to the Adam's apple downwards or even parallel. So I can't punch down to the Adam's apple. It's hard for me to punch straight in to the Adam's apple. So the best route to hit the Adam's apple is to drop low first. So bend your knees and strike up, okay? So bend your knees and strike up, bend your knees strike up as you're striking up that's when the fist comes up Boom. so as you bend your knees as my knees rise the hand also rises but notice that the last minute I'm driving my body weight into him Boom. Boom. now with this depending on the shape size of the person's neck you will either hit with the four knuckles like you'd have seen in Bartley's first strike or you hit with the major knuckles just treat it as if it's a fist and it'll find a way in. <laughs> straight in there. Boom. Straight into the Adam's apple. The little thrust at the end, make sure it's not just an upward slap, but it's got penetration into the neck. So you want it to come under his field of vision, but you still want it to dig into him. So we drop low, <laughs> and we burst up. Drop low, <laughs> and we burst up. And you see my body weight. I'm bending my knee, I'm lunging into him, bursting into this neck. So I want to smash into that Adam's apple. We drop, we rise. You notice Tyson Fury with his jab, it doesn't come up and out, it whips up like that. It's the exact same principle. We whip up into that throat punch. Yeah. Nice and simple. So Bartley Gorman's throat punch, stability starting low, bursting up with him. Next one, floating rib hooks. Nice and simple. Now, if you're gonna hit under the floating rib, my advice will be to use a vertical fist as opposed to a horizontal fist. So as opposed to hitting to the body like this, hit to the body like so. And with Bartley Gorman, he's very good at shifting footwork. So let's imagine that I wanna do a right-handed floating rib punch. His right hand's back, his right leg's back. As his right leg steps past his left leg, which is known as a shift, then we bang the shot in. So we get used to walking with our punches. If you're fighting in car parks, if you're fighting in the bales, if you're fighting like Gorman would have thought, it's a lot more enclosed than a ring. So you have to get much better at walking and punching because I don't have the ability to dance. Hit, dance, hit. There's nowhere really for me to dance. So being able to walk and hit allows me to hit with power because I'm using a natural drop step and it allows me to make the best use of space. So if we're gonna go for Bartley Gorman's floating rib punch, we're gonna be standing normally, we're gonna do a shifting step. So we, our right leg steps past our left leg. As we do so, we're gonna use a vertical fist or slightly supinated to really catch that rib and drive our body weight in. <laughs> From here. 
So passing step, and then we bang in that shot. And again, with this once it's landed, I don't step back, I step forward again and do the exact same thing. So I'm stepping and punching, stepping and punching, both the hand and the leg are landing pretty simultaneously. So I'm driving that person forward, I'm taking what little space there is and using it for my own ends. But most of all, it's dominated by a passing step and it often comes in twos. Pass and punch, pass and punch. Nice and interesting. Then, finally, the punch that he's famous for, the ball hammer. Now, Gorman freely admits that with this, there is a margin for error because Gorman's ball hammer, his right hand, his finishing punch, he typically aims between the eyes or on the temple. Now, the temple, we can get on board with. The temple, we can completely understand. But between the eyes, it does really, 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 really hurt to get hit between the eyes. But the margin for error for breaking your hand is also very, very high. So if you pull it off, you're living the dream. If you don't pull it off, you're living in A&E for a little while. But that said, we're talking about Bartley Gorman. We're talking about his techniques. He was a very, very successful bare knuckle boxer. And this was his finishing blow. So his ball hammer, typically, it's got some degree of chambering. So if you see him talk about his ball hammer punch, typically he's got some degree of push and chamber and then drive it straight in. Push, smash, push, smash, push, smash. So he's driving, he's kept his hand relatively cocked back and then he's burst it straight in. I can only assume that that's so he's got some degree of targeting because the weapon's high and in line with the target it's easier for him to target and hit if the head's moving he knows where to go if he goes from a normal boxing stance he's got a bit more guesswork whereas with this this is kind of his coup de gras he'll hit you and then almost in a throwing like fashion i've noticed when you see him doing his bag work he tends to throw his punches as opposed to driving them he tends to kind of almost throw them in like he's throwing a ball, which is an interesting technique for him. But push, ball hammer between the eyes, okay? <coughs> it's almost like he's throwing a ball from up high. Push, and then he just goes bang, straight between the eyes. Push, bang, straight between the eyes. Push, bang, straight between the eyes. I prefer, when boxing bare knuckle, or when practicing uh, traditional pugilism, to do it with a vertical fist, so Bartley Gorman's strike with a vertical fist is lovely. Bang! The ball hammer. I still wouldn't fancy this as my main shot between the eyes, but it's an option. Or if the opponent's turned, if they're cowering, again, we push, and we fire that ball hammer straight in. Push, bam! And he fires it straight in. But again, it's that throwing style punch as opposed to a cross which has got full shoulder, hip, and leg torque kind of just bombs it in from a higher position. Push, bang, Bartley Gorman's ball hammer. So you'll have seen, just to run down those techniques, which he marks as some of his favorite, half fist to the philtrum, double punch behind the ears, single punch behind the ears with a pivot. You've got a single knuckle to the eye. You've got the rabbit chop or the rabbit punch to the kidneys. You've got the longer punch to the kidneys. You've got the punch under the armpit with this kind of vertical fist. You've got the long dropping right under the heart. You've got the Adam's apple punch, which typically snakes up. And you've got the bull hammer, which typically thrown with the rear hand slightly chambered with a push and then a throwing lob of a punch as opposed to a drive. So we can get it into where he particularly wants it. So again, Bartley Gorman, King of the Gypsies, amazing guy, amazing book. Those are some of his favorite techniques. Watch as many videos of him as you can. Great, fascinating, interesting guy.